SpongeBob Grant. Be heard. Good afternoon, everyone. The telephone lines are open. The dump of the call in New Jersey. 201-489-WABC. Everywhere else, and that, of course, means New York, is 212-563-WABC. In a program dedicated to the free and open exchange of ideas and of opinions in the belief that as American citizens, you have a right to hear and to be heard. And what? is on your mind this afternoon, huh? Well, what can I tell you? Except uh, it's very difficult for me to have much else on my mind except the edition, today's edition of the New York Post, front page, lo and behold. I received phone calls this morning. Have you seen the Post? I said, no, I have the Times delivered, but the Post doesn't deliver out here. They said, well, you got to run out and get the post. Your picture's on the front page. And uh, lo and behold, it is on the front page, and there is a story which uh, I would be, uh, yeah, I'd be kind of phony if I pretended that, that I hardly noticed it or that I didn't care about it or that I wasn't in a curious way flattered by it all. But let me say this, the, ty- the headline, the headline of this newspaper, and I know a lot of you folks don't get the post. As a matter of fact, I went to the Rio Diner this morning, wanted to have a old bran muffin, and uh, nobody had seen it in there. They, they, they just read the Woodbridge News Tribune. You know, they, they want to read about Jojo DiMarino out there. That's, that's what's on their mind. The sleazy uh, politics of uh, Woodbridge, New Jersey. By the way, the more I see the, the televised uh, trial proceedings, uh, uh, the more sympathetic to Jojo Di Marino I become. But that's another story. Anyway, nobody had seen the post, and finally two ladies came in. They live in Fords, and lo and behold, bingo, they had the New York Post. Hate radio talk show host spew racial venom on the air. And uh, I proceeded to... Uh, Go to the newsstand uh, near the uh, Rio Diner. There was no post left. I had to go down to the shop right, not too far from where I live, and, and I got it there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me say this. I know virtually every time a politician, yes, even an athlete, or anybody is quoted in the newspapers or in the magazine, that person usually says he was misquoted or it was taken out of context. And I will tell you, I'll be the first to tell you that many times I scoff at that. I cynically scoff at that. I say, oh yeah, that's what they all say. I must tell you, I am joining the chorus now and tell you that I was misquoted. I'm not backing away from from any of my positions, unlike some people... I don't believe I'm guilty of uh, being so pusillanimous I want to back away from any of my, my positions. However, there is a quote that does disturb me uh, because it is, uh, it is absolutely, absolutely false, and I'm disappointed that Tim McDara, who interviewed me, uh, would have made such a mistake because I, I believe he's a, a top-notch city reporter. Tim McDara asked me about people who call the program, even though they know they might be abused by me, and I said, well, there's a lot of loneliness out there. I said, it, 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 it says, Billy Graham said it's pathetic, but the most, the most common condition of uh, people in uh, the New York area seems to be loneliness. People feel lonely. And so maybe they call me because they want to reach out and, and touch 
someone. I said, uh, but uh, I guess I can't say that because AT&T has already said that. So any of you who may have been offended because the quote says that I said the audience was pathetic and lonely, that's, that's not true. That was my only concern, that you would misunderstand. I'm proud of the fact that the New York Post points out it was on my show that Senator Al D'Amato told Mayor Dinkins to go to Africa and stay there. And I'm proud of the fact also that uh, on the very same page, the story uh, appears on page four, uh, there is a, a story concerning what a fake phony operation WLIB is. Now, never in, the, um, in my, my career have I been forced to uh, talk about another radio station, but um, I think that it's, uh, it's really high time, really high time that people stopped uh, making a special standard for WLIB. And I want to commend, I want to commend Michael Myers, executive director of the New York Civil Rights Coalition, uh, who, by the way, Michael Myers is uh, a uh, black American. And I want to commend uh, Dennis DeLeon, Dennis DeLeon of the uh, uh, Human Rights Commission, because uh, they too have criticized WLIB. But um, the, the fact of the matter is, no matter what you want to say about WLIB or WABC, or any other radio station for that matter, radio is a powerful force. Back in the uh, late 1960s, or no, it wasn't even the late 1960s, maybe the early 1960s, maybe it was even the late 1950s. They were beginning to, uh, to prepare obituaries for radio. Did you know that? Yeah, there were a lot of people who said, well, radio is going to just uh, be found in a museum somewhere. Well, let me tell you this. Radio not only did not die, radio survived and radio is thriving as never before. And because of the success of the Bob Grant Show, Talk radio all around the country proliferates. At the Bob Grant Roast on Sunday, September 15th, Rush Limbaugh stepped to the microphone and he paid tribute to me and he said, if it wasn't for Bob, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Nobody would be doing this. He paved the way. He showed the way. Well, I'm, 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 you know, I'm going to be accused of patting myself on the back here, but I'm alone in the studio. No one else to do it. But um, it is high time that the media stopped being concerned with the R word, racist, and uh, got concerned with the H word for honesty. It may be painful at times. It... Uh, may at times uh, seem to be not worth the candle, but in the long run, if we are not honest in expressing our feelings, in expressing our beliefs, in stating our candid views, then nothing else means much. I don't want to be a Pollyanna. I don't want to be one of these uh, self-serving individuals who uh, tells you, oh, I don't hate anybody. I'm above it all. I'm, I'm above hate. I'm a human being, but I'm above hate. I'm a human being, but I, I don't succumb to any negative views. If you're a human being and you're alive, you are going to have those times when you do succumb to negative views. And anybody who tells you he doesn't is a, is a big, fat, fake, phony fraud, whoever that may be. But ladies and gentlemen... I uh, do not shrink from uh, negative statements made about me. I do, however, insist that a person...
be accurate, and uh, if uh, they have been inaccurate, uh, when uh, their mistake is called to their attention, they can correct it. And I think uh, that uh, the only time a person should, uh, should object strenuously is if his integrity is challenged. At any rate, maybe you don't want to talk about this. Maybe you're not interested. Maybe you, you, especially you New Jersey folks, you don't read the New York Post. And if you're uh, at all anything like the provincial citizens of Woodbridge, you don't even know that the New York Post exists. It's very possible. Tomorrow, I will appear on Nine Broadcast Plaza. That's a uh, television program on Channel 9. At 11 o'clock, they called this morning, and naturally, they want to discuss what we're talking about, so-called hate radio. And um, although they have some people on the panel that... Um, whom I object to, uh, I, uh, I said I would, uh, I would be there anyway. All right, I think I, uh, I've said enough, at least for the nonce, whatever that means. Those of you who are trying to get through from New Jersey, I've just been uh, handed uh, a note. Someone came running into the studio. It says, uh, please give the New Jersey number because uh, some people don't know they can call from New Jersey. All right, Abigail Parge. It was Abigail Parge. She's wearing, Miss Parge is actually wearing sneakers. High top sneakers she's wearing. Seems a bit strange to see a, a spinster in a long dress which uh, swoops down virtually to the floor wearing high top sneakers. But uh, Abigail did bring me that note. Anyway, this portion of the Bob Grant Show is brought to you by Perillo since 1945. The very best to Italy, Hawaii, the Bahamas, and Caribbean cruising. Oh, Bob, um, I would like to address myself to an aspect of hatred and bigotry in the media which is usually unreported and is even condoned in some of our so-called prestige media to wit last week i went to see a movie called the pope must die showing in several theaters in manhattan this was a raw and crude attack upon the Catholic faith, upon millions of Catholic, and upon the College of Cardinals and the Pope. I saw, for example, the head of the College of Cardinals, the, uh, the head of the Curia, a Cardinal Rocco, who in this film was shown as a scoundrel, a foul-mouthed womanizer, and who was even a murderer. It showed him in his red robes, his beautiful red robes, and contrasting him, uh, w contrasting it with his foul behavior. Similarly, the College of Cardinals was shown in all their red robes and shown to be a bunch of stupid uh, high school-type sophomores without dignity. The Pope for example, uh, who was uh, an, a, a, a Lou Costello or, uh, or Oliver Hardy type uh, buffoon was shown in a scene in the Vatican apartments with his ex-mistress who stripped down to a lewd red dress and who was lounging over the Pope's toilet. I don't want to describe these any further because it really is... Debased. Well, we don't have the time for such vivid descriptions anyway. What is your point? The point I want to make is this, I, I, and I'm not a Catholic, I happen to be Jewish. Um, I, I say if this film were, for example, called The Black Minister must die, the New York City clergy, including Cardinal O'Connor, would rightly, rightly attack it. Yet the clergy in New York, uh, of all faiths for the most part, and much of the public, are silent in the face of this. I think this is an outrage. I think that this type of bigotry, which goes unreported, uh, and as I say, even the New York Times uh, condones it. Their, their criticism of the film was very favorable by Vincent Canby. This is outrageous, and I think this double standard should end. I just... All right, Mike, I think you've made your point very well, and I thank you for doing so. And thank you, and Godspeed. Uh, Nick, you're on WABC. Nick calling from Nassau County. Yes, Nick. Hi, Bob. How are you? What's on your mind, Nick? Well, I, uh... I went to the deli today, and I picked up the New York Post, and I got a real laugh out of it um, about the hate radio article. Yes. And, uh, you know, they pretty much tried to put you down. But, you know, I don't, I don't agree with everything you say, but uh, one thing I do have to say, for the most part, you do voice the opinion of, the, of a lot of people that really don't get to voice their opinion because there's something called being politically correct in this country, and... It basically says you can't say anything that disagrees with the norm. 
A uh, perfect example of that would be uh, what's going on, what just went on with the Thomas confirmation hearings for Justice Thomas. Um, what I found was here's a, 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 a justice who basically started from poverty and worked his way up and made something out of himself and didn't, didn't really rely on uh, what organizations like the NAACP say you should rely on, like affirmative action and so on and so forth, and he's put down. And uh, it, it's that type of an attitude that, that I find very offensive. And it, it's unfortunate because you really can't, there's very few programs that you can voice your opinion, and I feel that your, your program is one of them, and I feel that you're a spokesperson for people that really feel suppressed by uh, what's supposed to be politically correct and the media. All right, thank you. Thank you, Nick. Uh, I'm going to the New Jersey line. Believe it or not, yes, somebody is calling from New Jersey, David of Irvington. Yes, David. Yes, good afternoon, Bob. Um, I was also um, told about the article that appeared in the New York Post. And I, I find it totally an outrage because I, I've listened to you for for years. And in case someone's just tuning in, I want to let them know that I, I happen to be black. And had it not been for your program, I would not have met Rory Ennis. And I would not have been able to get involved. And um, as I've said to you many times, I, I there's not a, a racist bone in you. I mean, you have... You have cut white racists off for using the N-word, and you, all you're doing is speaking out and telling the truth against the racial racketeers in the black community. And um, I'm like you. I'm, I'm going through a similar tough time over here, but I do not intend to back down from the things that I say. I'm going to continue to speak out against this nonsense because it's not helping our people any. And... Uh, I want you to know that the thought police of black radio have rendered me uh, somehow in need of help. You know, there's a talk show host that has been saying for the last two days that they pity me. I need help. Who's, be, uh, who's been saying that? <laughs> well, um, she's on uh, WWRL. Her name is Donna Wilson. And uh, I've called uh, repeatedly, you know, criticizing the buffoonery of Sharpton and company. <laughs> 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 and, so, uh, and so, as a result, then uh, something must be wrong with me. So, you know, she's throwing a pity party, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because I don't fall into lockstep with the radical thought police. Well... David, I'm, I'm more proud of you than ever, and I appreciate your call, and thank you for the kind words. Okay, and, and keep up the good work, because, you know, we all appreciate you. Well, thanks again, David. Mm -hmm. Bob Grant here on WABC. You can talk about anything and everything. It doesn't have to be the uh, Post article, by the way. I just thought I'd throw that in, because there may be some people who say, who cares, you know, especially if you're from New Jersey, uh, because people in New Jersey just don't want to read New York newspapers, they are very provincial, especially in Woodbridge, where all they know is the News Tribune. Uh, that's all. That's all they know, the News Tribune. They're watching on... Uh, by the way, I can't watch it too well because the skunks who run, who ruin, who chisel, suburban cable have not... I don't know uh, how many of, of you uh, folks have been suffering the same thing, but most of the channels are... Uh, well, I won't say most. Uh, maybe half the channels... Uh, are not coming in clear, they're jumping around, they're jiggling around. So they have uh, Channel 35 out my way, which is uh, showing the Jojo DiMarino uh, sh trial. And uh, it keeps jumping around. Anybody from Suburban Cable, you want to fix it? You want to do something about it? Or do you want to just keep billing us, billing us, billing us? And if we're, heaven forbid, if we're late with a payment, we get the threatening letters... One of these days, we're going to catch up with you skunks, you crooks from Suburban Cable. We're going to get you one of these days. But right now, you're on WABC. Hello. Yes, sir. Mr. Grant, I'm an avid listener. Never called you, but I've been moved to call you with two points. One, that ungrateful post editor, Jerry Knackman, you invited him to sub for you while on your Scandinavian trip. And in return, he allows his paper to unfairly attack you. That's point one. But point two... The New York Post equates you with black radio, and that is false equating. Black radio spews hate. It's anti-white, anti-Jewish.
But you have always been fair, and you call the facts as they are with no prejudices. It's the facts that are hurting those who are attacking you. Well, all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, say hello to uh, a man checking in from Wayne, New Jersey. It's George. Hello, George. Hi, Bob. Uh, I haven't seen the article yet. I work nights, so I'll, I'll catch it later. Um, I got the gist of it, and I was told a long time ago that the truth hurts, and if you're hurting anybody, it's because you're telling the truth. <laughs> you're not a bigot. You're not a hate monger. You're not a racist. We all know that, and uh, what, what else can I say? If anything, if, if they want to get that city together, they have to get the socialist gas bags out of there and replace the whole regime with some logically thinking people. <laughs> thank you very much. All right. Thank you, George. Hilly, you're, uh, uh-oh. Hilly, you're on WABC. Hello. Oh, Robert, you don't have to use those tones. Your tones are dulcet mellifluous, and they're, and they're good, and, and it's when, you, when you're speaking in righteous indignation, and uh, when you're speaking naturally, I'm not a boogeyman. I'm just somebody who, like you, is opinionated and who's not afraid to uh, uh, talk about my opinion. Uh, I don't know why uh, everybody's worried about Radio Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as you call it. Uh, it's only on from sunup to sundown. It's only been there a certain little while. ABC and Barry Great have been on for years. When I hear Barry Great, I hear the Israeli hour. Uh, when I hear other stations, I hear their particular side. And I'm in agreement with you when you talk about First Amendment. Now, if everybody else can have opinionated talk hosts, so should LIB. LIB is speaking to a particular audience, people like myself who want to hear the other side of the story. Because we don't hear the other side of the story down this end of the dial. Although... Also, I listen to this uh, 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 end of the dial uh, just as I read many, many newspapers. I don't read one newspaper. I read three or four a day because somewhere in between lies the truth. Uh, very few of us are not subjective, okay? So that, so that uh, uh, LIB is subjective. They try to be objective, but they're human beings. No, they're not trying to be objective. That, th that's why I disagree with you, Hilly. Uh, they make no pretense of trying to be objective. I disagree with you. I've I, never, I, I've, I've I, never heard I, I one time yeah. that they try to be objective. You see, where where well, WLIB what you do. Where, where WLIB really, really is uh -huh. is, is is I think uh, uh -huh. uh, guilty of of uh, of absolutely uh, absolutely violating the spirit of what we're supposed to do is when they have uh, somebody like Colin Moore uh, and uh, people like him disseminate. All this false information, however, which of course they did do, you know. However, he's been on Barry Gray's show any time, any number. What are you talking? Who cares about Barry well, Gray? He'd, he'd, he'd appear on your show, just like Sharpton has. They'd appear on your well, show. Look, and and, and look. Oh, the only thing I'm saying here is. No, wait, 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 wait. Hilly, Hilly, you didn't yeah. let me finish. Oh, I apologize. So, they are. They were disseminating mm -hmm. absolutely false information. It was so bad that even Joe Hines. Had to uh, had to appear on WLIB and uh, try to uh, try to straighten the matter out. Okay, let me deal with that. Joe Hines was scheduled to debate Alton Maddox, and at the last minute he couldn't make it. Also on that same station, also uh, Barry Slotnick was supposed to uh, debate uh, Alton Maddox on the show you're appearing on tomorrow, the last broadcast nine, uh, and I'll be looking by the way. Um, and he backed out. So I think it. I think that uh, it was an opportunity for objectivity for, the, for 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 both audiences to hear the two of them exchange legalisms. But they chose not to do that. Well, you're, you're citing some exceptions. You know, it's interesting that here you are, a black person, mm -hmm. uh, defending WLIB. Yeah, because, you, I, because I. All right, fine. But yet two other black persons. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, let's just talk about Michael Myers, executive director of the New York Civil Rights Coalition. Uh -huh. He says, my own feeling is Percy mm. Sutton should have done something mm. to put a lid on the hate and the scapegoating that goes on. Okay, let me talk about Michael Myers, because I want to talk about him. You've been in New York 21 years. How long, how, when was the first time you heard of Michael Myers? A couple of years ago. Okay. I've been in New York all my life. I heard of Michael Myers around the same time. He, like Roy Ennis, who white folks love, 
and now Michael Myers is, is, is the latest one to try to, they couldn't get 20 black people of any stripe, conservative, liberal, to follow them anywhere. I, I disagree with that. Uh, I'm, I, I'm black, I know the community. Hey, Hilly, are you trying to tell me that if a white guy mm -hmm. likes, uh, say, Roy Innes, for example, uh -huh. uh, then blacks are going to be so stupid, nope, nope, they'll nope, say, nope. oh, if Grant likes him, then I don't like oh, him? Oh, no. No? No. No, it's the content of what they say. And it's, and, and, and it's, and, and it's, what, they, it's what they choose to say, when they choose to say it, and how they choose to say it. Don't well, that, that's your interpretation. Some of us like to think. Hilly, you know, I think what I think what you're doing is mm -hmm. what you're doing mm -hmm. is you're you're taking uh, a position of Michael Myers or uh, Roy Innes, mm -hmm. put them both in the bag together, whatever you want to do, and if their position isn't in lockstep uh, with Mason, Maddox, Sharpton, oh, Hilly, no. Hilly, I happen to I happen, for instance, for instance, I don't dislike Ben Hooks. I don't dislike Charlie Rangel. They they have talked against Sharpton, Maddox. I don't know of anybody who everybody agrees with. Well, even me. Uh, you're following the party line, though. You're no, following no, the party no, no, line. Bob, I'm an independent thinker. Well, so is Roy Innes, and you seem to object to Roy's being an independent thinker. No. I'm, I object to the content and the timing of, of what he <laughs> says and does. That's all. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's all. All right, Hilly, I'm, don't forget to be watching the program tomorrow. Well, you know, I will. Hey, listen. Uh, have a nice day, and I mean that sincerely. I know you do. Okay. All right. Talk to you. You know, the LIB listeners, how hatred they are to the whites, but they didn't mention in the ad or in the story that you had a candlelight dinner with Lynn Samuels down at the uh, Rio Diner. Do you know why they failed to mention oh, that? Oh, that's ridiculous. Mike, well, do you think that's funny? I think it's hilarious. I, I thought it was great. To, Lynn has you know, never even been to the Rio Diner, Mike. Well, they, that's what I heard, you know. I heard. No, Mike, Mike, are you trying to, I mean, tell me. I'm curious, somebody like you, you sound like a grown man. Did you think this was hilarious? Are we all going to fall on the floor laughing? I think it's funny. Uh, what is funny about it? I just think it's funny. That no, you what is funny about it? The fact that you were dating Lynn Samuels. Hmm. Yeah. And that you're, you know, why, why, why you're are you, why, Mike, Mike, okay. why, why are you making this up? You want to get in the act? You want to work at WABC? You want to be uh, one of the crowd? Is that oh, it? I'd love to. I'd love, yeah, to. You'd I'd love, love to. to fill in on the show with you yeah. one day, Bob. I'd uh, love to sit in as your sidekick. Yeah. Well, Mike, if, uh, when you grow up, give me a call. Uh, give me a call, will you? Thank I you. I sure. All right. Here's uh, Mike from Queens now. Uh, yeah. That was Mike from uh, wherever, uh, from the from Marlboro, Marlboro State. I'm Here's uh, Mike guy, from Queens. Bob. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Nice to talk to you again. I hope you recognize my voice. Listen, uh, you know. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What does that mean? It means I've talked to you before. One time you kept me on for twenty minutes. Really? You like the way I talk? You said I'm really? rehabilitated. You forgot. I forgot, Mike. You're easy to forget. But what is it you'd like to say? No, I just want to tell you, there's a wise guy in all of them, and nobody ever mentions what this guy talks about on his show, that WWRL, this Bob Law. He's a wise guy in all of them. He's more prejudiced and more racial than all of them. I catch him at night, I listen sometimes. You, must and you wouldn't believe what this guy puts on the air. Mm -hmm. And they mention guys like you that do good, and this guy causes all that uh, prejudice. He had this uh, Jeffries on there one night with some other guy, McCray, and they were talking. They were cutting all kinds of things up about the whites. So you're doing a perfect job, and I told you, anytime you need any encouragement or any kind of backup, I'll be right there with you. And that's a promise. Thank you, Mike. Do you remember me, the bank? Remember? The bank? The bank man, yeah. The bank man? Yeah. You mean you pulled a bank job? Yeah, I told you about it. It's 17 years. Oh, okay. Oh. All right, all right. I went okay. down to the diner to see. I shook hands with your diner, but you were busy. You, you didn't know. steal anything while you were there, did Are you? Are you kidding? I was. I protect you. I don't steal no more. I don't okay. do that. I'm rehabilitated, Bob. I meant what I said. I've been home 29 years already. That's right. You did 17 years in the slammer. That's it. Mod on. And then, then those people can't convince me no matter what they say. I know what they are. You understand those low lights that you only always mention? Right. I'm not talking about the good ones. I'm talking about the bad ones. When they're bad, they're bad, and that's it. Mike, you said it all. Thank you. Thank you. All right, some profound wisdom from Mike of Queens. Let's try George checking in now from his car. Yeah. All these show-offs who want to let me know they got car phones. Yeah, George. <laughs> Bob, I, I thought that exchange you just had with Hilly was really a great exchange. I, I was very uh, moved by it, actually. I, I think that People like you who have the brains that can talk to these guys uh, it would help out the whole goddamn country. So 
the more more power to you, buddy. No, oh, thank you, George. Right. Let's try Tom checking in right now from Harwood. Yeah, Tom. Bob, how are you? What's on your mind, Tom? Yeah, I just wanted to make a couple comments. Number one, you're doing a great job at WABC. Don't let anyone take your focus away from what you're doing. Uh, the Post obviously needs headlines. Uh, you're a good way to get headlines. And uh, just don't take the focus of wh how you're informing people in the New York area. Oh, uh, I'm glad you said what you said, Tom, because that is less likely today than at any time in my career. Good. That at any time I'm more focused today than I've ever been. Uh, I cannot tell you how free... My story was old, but you've been in the KK for a long time, so my story can't be but so old. By the way, by the way, Bill, uh, can you uh, understand me? I'm wearing my hood right now. Can you understand me? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I go along with, uh, you know, what you are. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, I tell you what, I'm going to pull the hood up, uh, pull the hood up around me uh, a little more here. Uh, okay, now i got the hood the way I like it. Uh, all right, uh, Bill, uh, can you still hear me? I'm wearing yeah, my hood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I can hear racist any time. Yeah. What, uh, what is your definition of a racist? Is a racist a uh, guy, uh, a, guy who, uh, a guy who is not no, going to... No, let me tell you what it is. Oh, all right. Grant. Go ahead, tell me what that's it is. No, that's, that's all, all you got to say, it's Bob, Bob Grant, Grant. And, uh -huh. and, and you're a racist. Well, that's no answer, uh, Bill. Why is it an answer? Because you haven't, uh, you haven't defined it. Verbally, maybe you can't. For, for what? For a hate mongler? Mongler? For a hate mongler. Hate mongler. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Bill, let me tell you something. The day I need my shoes shined, I'll call you. Till then, you, save it, will you? Get your mother to shine them. Uh, and uh, being uh, Bill has that particular background, immediately he thinks of your mother. That they have mothers on the brain, those people. Max, you're on WABC. Hello. Oh, hi. Hi, Bob Grant. Yes, Max, don't be surprised. Who'd oh, you expect? Oh, great. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I missed your show on um, Sunday because uh, I was at 42nd Street and I stopped in uh, to watch a little porno. I don't understand what you mean. You missed my show Monday. What no, no, you... Sunday at the uh, convention center. Uh, the convention center? That was Saturday. Saturday. Oh, I got the days uh, mixed up. Okay, anyhow, um, I've been hearing a lot of hate. I mean, what type of... Um, okay, everyone puts down people for hating. Okay, uh, if, you, uh, if you hate people, you're bad, you're no good, and blah, 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 you're ignorant, and so forth. But um, what I've been hearing, the people that say you have to love everybody, you have to love the yeah. cops. Well, as I tell you what, I want you to take a couple of deep breaths, get yourself together. Yeah. We'll talk to you right after the news. Okay, Bill? Max. Okay. All right. Or Max, excuse yeah. me. All right, Max and Morristown. We're going to ask Max to uh, stay on. We ask you to stay glued to your radio at 4 o'clock. BC, hello. Bob, a pleasure to talk to you, and I'm very nervous, but I felt I just had to call you on this posting. Today, when I went to the store to buy the paper, I was fortunate enough to read what they had said. I didn't buy it. Shame and on I will, you. Shame and I on will you. not buy it. Shame on them. Where do they get off it? No, how, I how, mean, it, it's good. The more they sell, the, the, then they'll say, hey, maybe we should put this guy on the front page more often. Well, you should be on the front page, but not for such thing like that. What about the other station? Have, if they want to hear hate mongers, they should turn in on them. Yeah, but if you read the story, it doesn't accuse me uh, of anything in particular. It really doesn't. It, uh, I, I, you see, to tell you the truth, I, I don't object to all this. You I don't. Uh, No, I don't. Hey, look. Um... If you can't stand the heat, as uh, Harry Truman said, right. get out of the kitchen. Right. Yeah, it doesn't right. bother me. Right. Uh, I know uh, uh, Rush was very offended. I don't know why he was offended about it, but he was offended. Uh, but uh, I'm not offended by it. I think, I think my audience, if I may be so bold as to use that term, I think the people who listen to this program uh, know what I am. They've That's heard right. me long enough. Right. And I think they understand me, so well, so I'm not really worried. Well, I'm glad because, as I said, uh, why? Because you speak the truth, and people don't like it. Uh, there must be somebody after the post for uh, you know. After, I think they're after you. <laughs> well, it, it sounds that way. Let me let me tell you this. Yeah. I uh, I have reached a point in my life and my career when uh, I don't have to uh, be concerned about anything except. Uh, Telling the truth as I see it. I right. don't say I don't say I'm one hundred percent right. Nobody uh -huh. really no, is. No, you're right. That's it. Uh, but uh, I, I'm giving my honest views, and I'm not tailoring them because I'm worried about some uh, some pressure group. I don't tailor my views to satisfy any pressure well, group. Well, I think that's why this was done. 
because you don't. You don't pressure any group. And uh, as I said, the Post, I would never buy the Post again. Well, never. I appreciate your call, Anne. Okay, Bob. Thank you. Good luck. Bye-bye. All right. And uh, we don't have a uh, guy on the line? No, not yet. All right. Let's go to Henry, who's uh, patiently waiting uh, on the line from the Bronx. Yes, Henry. Uh, Bob, uh, I found out about the headline because <coughs> a friend of mine called me. I would expect that more from the city center than the Amsterdam News. You see, the reason I think the intellectual right left in this country hates you is because you've got four qualities which they've abandoned years ago, and that's humanity, intellect, integrity, or courage. That's my litmus, litmus test for any journalist or politician. And... Uh, uh, I don't think someone like Kelly understands it because he's got his agenda. By the way, uh, I wonder if the City Sun or some of those papers wrote about Jean Lamar from the City University, uh, you know, the student government. Yeah. Uh, of course, I know you've got a lot of calls. I just want to say one other thing before I get off, and that is I think uh, Mario Cuomo has proved himself a Charlotte by his attacks on D'Amato. And we're not saying that anyone can't be criticized, but again, I think it has to do with style and substance. Perhaps D'Amato might have said something else, but the, the, the nitty-gritty of what he said about uh, the, uh, Dinkins' trip to Africa at this particular time was right on target. And that's it. Well, Il Supremo, each and every day, uh, seems to uh, go out of his way to prove uh, that all the things I've said about him are right. I suppose I should thank him. I ought to send him a little thank you note. Mm. Uh, dear Il Supremo, uh, thank you for uh, doing everything you can to prove that uh, I've been right about you for years, that you are a fake, phony, fraud, pompous ass, an arrogant oaf uh, who is uh, absolutely beneath contempt. Thank you very much. Okay. Right. Bye, Bob. Harv, uh, Bob Grant with you on WABC. Hello. Hi, uh, Bob. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Uh, Bob, uh, you're unfortunately being used as a smokescreen uh, to keep the Post from being uh, called a, a racist. Uh, they're having a feud for the last few weeks with WLIB. LIB has been organizing a boycott the post uh, 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 tirade. And um, it seems that uh, maybe it's having an effect on their circulation, and they decided to fight back a little. And so what they're doing is uh, they're using uh, you, Rush, Barry Gray, others, uh, as a smoke screen so that they appear to be... Uh, fairly hitting uh, both sides and uh, you know all they're doing is increasing your your uh, uh, your show's ratings because everybody wants to hear what you have to say as they normally do anyway and uh, so they there's no way that they can can hurt you but uh, I think it's a despicable act of cowardice on their part that they just don't fight them without bringing you into it Harv you amaze me you know why uh and I, and I don't mean this in, a, uh, in an elitist uh, sort of way, but I thought that... Uh, well, I, let me ask you a question, first of all. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please pay co uh, close attention to this. Harv, are you in any way in the broadcasting business? I'm not. Are you in any way in the newspaper business? I'm not in the newspaper business. I'm an engineer. Well, you amaze me, Harv, because I didn't think anybody outside of the industry would pick up on that. But this is exactly what the Post did. Uh, they did use me as a smokescreen. Uh, they did want to fight back the, the viciousness of uh, the uh, WLIB clack, the viciousness of these, uh, of these black racists. And uh, in order to, uh, to look even-handed, in order to look non-racist, uh, they did uh, put me uh, in the mix. You are absolutely right. You amaze me. No, thanks, Bob. You amaze me all the time with how much you know. Uh, Bob, I, I wanted to, to tell you what really gave me a bigger laugh than the Post story today is, is uh, Mayor Dinkins uh, saying that he wants to start a racial peace corps here in the city. Maybe he can get uh, Dr. Jeffries to join as the first member. Yeah, how absurd, a, a racial peace corps. How absurd. What a fake, phony thing that is. Yeah. Uh, that's like, uh, uh, that's like uh, saying, uh, you know, I know there are a lot of murderers out there, but I'm not concerned about the murderers. Uh, I'm concerned about uh, those guns uh, that are out there, those guns that are shooting themselves. Right. Thank you, Harv. Thank you. I mean, firing themselves. You, you get the analogy. Is that a good analogy? I thought it was. After all, it was made impromptu on WABC. Oh.
ABC, hello, Jim. Uh, hello, Mr. Grant. I'd like to make a few statements about the New York Post. Uh, on their front page, it says, talk show hosts spew racial venom on the air. And they have a big picture of you, as you know. And I'm looking through their article to find some quote that could be tied in with portraying you as a racist. The one thing I've, I found that says uh, anything to do with any kind of race says minorities are the Big Apple's majority. You don't need the papers to tell you that. Walk around and you know it. To me, that's a bad thing. I'm a white person. If they think that that's racial, they're completely backwards. How, how, can, how is something like that can be construed as a racist statement is absurd. I'd also like to say um, for them to lump you and Rush Limbaugh and with somebody like Don Amos and Howard Stern, who are just a couple of buffoons just trying to shock people into getting ratings for their show, that's another... Uh, mm. uh, it's just insane. Well, we're all in, in the same media, and I suppose they feel that uh, since uh, we're all in radio that uh, it's, uh, it's perfectly valid to uh, put us uh, in the same uh, bag. Uh, I want to get to that quote uh, that you, uh, you read from the Post. Uh, the quote is not inaccurate. The quote is not inaccurate, but it is uh, out of context. I'll tell you what I mean by that. I did uh, open the program by making that comment concerning the uh, racial uh, change in the city. I did not say at that point... Uh, that I didn't like it because I was a white person. I didn't say that. Later, a person called. I remember a woman calling and uh, and saying, you sounded like you weren't too happy about that. And I said, well, I'm not. What am I going to lie about it? And she said, well, why aren't you happy? I said, well, after all. And then I told her the obvious. And I had more people later that day. I'm not talking about on the radio, but later that day. Uh, that evening when I was at some affair. More people tell me they heard that and, quote, Bob, we were amazed you said it. I said, why be amazed? Now, if I were black and I said that, would you be amazed? They said, well, no. I said, well, why do we insist on two entirely different standards? Mm. And they kind of smiled sheepishly and said, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Well, gee, Bob, you got cullones. Cullones for telling the truth? That's cullones? What is this? What is this? The old Soviet Union, Nazi Germany? What is this? Mm. And also, every time I hear of a black leader... They are racist. Why don't I ever hear the term black racist in the media? Well, why, called, why do I always hear the term white racist? Well, if you're, if you're white, you're a racist. Uh -huh. If you're black, you're an activist. Mm -hmm. well, activist. I, I'm fed up with it. And any time <laughs> I hear someone knock Bob Grant or say that Rush Limbaugh calls himself God when he says he has talent on loan from God, I'm not going to subscribe to the Post anymore. And, well, uh, and look, any time I, I, I see someone in person uh, knock Bob Grant or say that Bob Grant is a racist, I'm going to become very annoyed, and... Well, uh, d d hey, Jim, don't, don't let it bother you too much. There are a lot of people who call me that. Uh, and don't be too mad at the Post, uh, because uh, they're uh, guilty of uh, no more than, um, than most other publications are. They're, you know, so they're not any worse than anybody else. As a matter of fact, editorially, they are the only paper we can count on. If you've read the Daily News lately... It's uh, just about worse than the Times, even. And oh. Newsday, forget it. Uh, what about, the, also in the article, this one sentence? But the clout of LIB is dwarfed compared to the audience for the powerhouse WABC. What is the point of them saying that? They're, tr they're trying to tie in these racial rioting with radio stations. The, the white people who confront the black racists coming into their community aren't fired up by white radio. The black people coming in are fired up by racist black radio. Well, I don't worry about anything because I do a program on WABC every day, Monday through Friday. The program is repeated at 3 in the morning. They play excerpts on the best of Grant. So you have many, many hours of people to hear what I say, what my callers say, my reaction to them. It's all out in the open. I've got nothing to hide, and I've got nothing to, uh, uh, nothing to defend or retreat from. And I feel I'm very comfortable with myself, Jim, and that's what counts. Thank you for God the call. God bless you, Mr. Grant. Uh, right now, I wish I could have a big fanfare because I would like to present the fake, phony fraud award to a caller you had whose name is Hilly. I was very surprised to hear him on the phone because one morning last week, I happened to turn on uh, WLIB on my way to work, 
and I came in in the middle of he speaking to the host, saying that that racist white station down the dial, ABC, won't let him speak. They won't take his call anymore. Uh, he was also telling them that he knows that a lot of whites listen to LIB, but won't admit it, and that that station, LIB, has the whites' attention, and we listen because we're curious and because we fear what they say. Um, he also, I, I, in listening to WLIB, uh, I believe that a station can cater to a constituency, but uh, I, it, it really gets to me when I hear them polarize their constituency with sayings like, this is WLIB, the all-black station, or we're now going to have all-black news. And I would pose this question to Hilly. How, what would he say to Bob Grant if he called after Bob Grant says, you're listening to WABC, the all-white station, or Harley Karn saying it's now time for all-white news? Uh, well, uh, he, he, I'm, I'm glad you're asking those questions because those questions pinpoint, they underscore what, uh, what I've been saying, that we have uh, absolutely two distinct tracts uh, that... Uh, we run on the uh, track that you and I are on right now and uh, the privileged LIB track, uh, which uh, is uh, impervious to uh, the standards that everybody else uh, seems to, uh, to be held to. Exactly. Yeah. And I would just like to say enjoy your show and keep up the good work. Uh, thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Uh, Bill, uh, Bill calling from Queens, hello. Yeah, Bob, yesterday you spoke about this black fellow, Briscoe, who got killed by those uh, two... Black hoodlums yeah. using the phone or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And you want uh, you looking for Sharpton and Maddox to demonstrate? What are they going to demonstrate? Somebody was arrested. Uh, well, somebody was uh, was arrested also in the uh, uh, in the Yusuf Hawkins uh, killing. Someone was also. Uh, yeah, uh, arrested the in the Howard Beach. Someone was also arrested right, well, in the, in the, the San, in the Howard Beach. Let's talk about the San Gennaro. Yeah, well, you know, you don't like that I had an answer, do you, Bill? Well, you don't like that fact. You're stunned that I had an answer for your yeah, inane what they, question. What would they demonstrate? Arrest somebody. Arrest the two guys who did it were arrested right away. What are they going to do? Run outside of the jail and, and have a demonstration for that? Yeah, they're, uh, they're going to console well, the parents. Let's talk about the San Gennaro Festival where hmm. four cops were, were assaulted. What happened? You yeah. don't even speak about hey, that. Hey, Bill, you know what, Bill? You have what a problem. What happened? Four cops. Hey, Bill, you, I, I, order you, I order you, Bill, to have to look in the mirror for the next half hour. Just look in the mirror for the next half hour, and I know you don't like what you see looking back at you, but that's not my problem. Ladies and gentlemen, Klaus Barbie, the Gestapo boss of Lyon, France, during World War II, we have some good news for you. He has died in a local hospital in Lyon, According to Rhone Regional Authorities, he was 77. The butcher of Lyon, he died. He's dead. Okay. Uh, Dan, you're on WABC. Hello. Hello, Bob. About, uh, I don't know, a month ago or so, you were reading some mail. Someone wrote in mentioning that uh, you were among his two favorite radio personalities, the other one being Howard Stern. Um... I've only heard you about 10 minutes or so at the most today. I've been busy doing things. But I know that both of your names were linked in today's article. Um, and I wondered what your thoughts were on him, how you, what you, how you view him as a, uh, as a uh, radio personality and, uh, and so on. Well, he's been, uh, he'd been very successful. He's been very successful because... Uh, uh, most people are dumb, uh, <laughs> and most people are very naive, and most people believe his garbage, or if they don't believe it, uh, they get a kick out of it, whatever the case may be. I understand that he spent uh, a good portion, perhaps all of his program, uh, whining about the fact he was not on the front page in uh, the uh, story today. Uh, and uh, obviously, uh, from what I, I gather, I wish I had heard him, but uh, I... Um, I was not listening to him, but I did uh, hear from others who tell me that he sounded green with envy. He was not on the front page. Well, he's had much more publicity in the last couple of years than I have. I mean, what does he want? Does he want every day? I mean, after all. Um, but, uh, you know, he, uh, he has, he's been successful. What do you want me to tell? What do you want me to say? No, well, okay, well, uh, does he fit in the context of this, uh, of this article? Not really. Uh, not yeah, really. Uh, 
okay, maybe generally, are you a Howard Stern fan? In the morning, you listen to the radio, if you would. Would you listen to Howard Stern? And on, uh, Why do I have to answer what I listen to Howard? No. Oh, I'm, listening okay. to, I'm listening to WABC. In the morning? Of course. With those two people on? Well, I, uh, those two people have uh, made amends, and um, uh, they're trying. They're trying to do the right thing. So uh, I reward their effort by listening. If I listen at all. I, you know, you, you're assuming that I listen to the radio. Right. Assuming you did so. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Tell, uh, tell Howard you did, uh, you did your job. By the way, let me say this about Howard. Sure. Uh, my, uh, my people had talked to Gary Delabate, his uh, producers, uh, his producer, I guess, about uh-huh. being at the Bob Grant Rose, being a roaster. And we were told yes, then we were told no, then we were told yes, then we were told no, then we were told definitely no, he couldn't make it. Friday the 13th, two days before the roast, Gary Delabate called the uh, chairman of the roast committee to ask uh, uh, where, where it was and uh, uh, who was going to pick them up and all that. Can you believe that? And the chairman of the Rose Committee said, hey, it's too late. We, we have too many people. We don't need Howard. By the way, if you're listening, Howard, why, what do you think you are, King Charles I? Uh, cut all that dumb hair off, you jerk. Thank you. Uh, was that uh, this Johnny Hill was killed. Very strange circumstances. He was killed by a correction officer at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. He was off duty. He lived in Plainfield and he killed the boy in Newark. Yet there's no outcries from the Sharpins and the Maddoxes because it was a black correction officer. And, uh, and had it been a white officer, mm-hmm. this uh, Mary Hill would be able to get justice for her son. And uh, this uh, Hill lad, uh, what was he? He was 19 years old. I mean, his racial... Black. He was black. So it was a black on a black. All right, now, I, I just, the reason I asked that is um, I knew he was black, but I wanted to highlight for our listeners because it proves once again the Sharptons, the Masons, the Maddoxes, the Jesse Jacksons, the racial racketeers don't really care about black people. If they did, then they would object even in this case. They only get involved if the person at the other end is white. Is that your point? That is, and also the fact... Now, this is a, so... Uh, in fact, one of the witnesses, it's strange, but her house burned down the day after this happened, and she won't testify now. Uh, there's her, the family has been threatened by the police. There's so many uh, circumstances that are so uh, strange, and uh, they cannot get any press, any pub- publicity... And the family is at uh, wit's end with this. Oh. And it's still under investigation. Yeah. Where here's something Sharpton could jump on and uh, get an officer, a uh, correction officer, indicted. But they don't care because it's a black officer. Right you are. Jeff, I appreciate your call. And thank you for the give, time. Give, your rega- give my regards to your mother. When and you uh, she wants to come on your newsbreaker line. Jeff, I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank Judy, you're on WABC. Hello. Hi, Bob. I'm calling because I just wanted you to know that Rush had quite a discussion about the feud between the Post and WLIV this morning. So um, any of your callers who have seemed to be super smart on that subject probably got the information from that show. Also, I wonder if the Post perhaps hasn't done itself a disservice by the way they handled the story since so many of your fans seem to be ready to cancel their subscriptions. It's a self-defeating kind of article, isn't it? No, I'll tell you why. Because there aren't that many people who have subscriptions to the Post, so they're not going to cancel. People always say that, you know. They, yeah. uh, they, they say that, uh, and it's just talk. They're just angry. Uh, they'll continue buying the Post uh, because uh, if they want some, uh, some decent editorials, they have to buy the Post. They're not going to get, they're not going to get uh, sensible editorials in the Times or in the Daily News, and certainly not a Newsday. I totally agree. So even though even though I think the Post uh, did not do the correct job, nevertheless, I still endorse their editorial posture. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, notice I'm not uh, really complaining all that much. Um, I think that, uh, uh, once again, uh, things don't uh, come out the way you want. I know some other people uh, were very sensitive about the way the thing came out, but... Uh, uh, let's see. Paul, you're on WABC. Hello. Yes, hello, Bob. I'd like to respond to uh, one of the things that Hilly said 
we should discredit him. He said that the Roy Innes should comment at a appropriate time. That's what uh, bothered Hilly. When is Roy Innes supposed to comment? Before the things happen? I mean, he's not a psychic. Uh, I mean, he, he, he's got to comment after they happen. Uh, you know, I, it, the guy is devoid of all logic. Uh, but but uh, another thing I wanted to point out, you, you brought up on Monday about this Afrocentrism thing, and you hit it right on the head when you said that many of the people who bring up these theories are not, uh, are not experts or at least learned in the field that they bring up the theories in. For instance, there's this theory going around that's saying that the uh, Greeks stole math from the Africans. Now, the people that are bringing up these, these claims have no background in mathematics, none whatsoever. I'm surprised they could even do long division some of these people that are bringing up these claims. But, but this is what's been going around in the college campuses, and now they're trying to bring it into the high schools. Now, me, me my, my, my own background is that I, I've studied the history of mathematics. I have a degree with a minor in mathematics, and I know exactly what the, what the, what, what the uh, history is. But nobody will ever listen to me because it just doesn't fit their political agenda. Absolutely. Well, the, the person who... Uh has advanced uh, this uh, absurd uh, theory uh, is a person who uh, has been discredited in other areas, uh, has no expertise, and uh, is, uh, is just reveling in the publicity he's getting uh, because all you have to do is come out with the most outlandish, absurd theory and the media flocks to your, uh, to your side or at least uh, pays all kinds of attention, uh, especially if you are purporting to uh, alter uh, history. Yes, Bob, and another thing, I, I always wonder, when these people bring up things like chemistry was stolen and math was why don't they bring up these uh, topics and these uh, theories to a mathematical uh, society? Why don't they go to one of these mathematical conventions and bring up these theories? They never do, because they know they'll be laughed out of the building. Absolutely. Thank you for the call. Okay, Bob. It, many leaders, right, have painted backgrounds, right? Uh, look, uh, David, I don't think we're going to get very far with this conversation because you're going to uh, keep interrupting yourself and saying, right, right, right. Say what you want to say. Okay. Uh, I've gone on record. I've stated my position many times, not because I bring it up, but because other people bring it up. Well, I think what? other people bring it up in hopes that they will wear me down and eventually I will change my mind because it seems to bother people that I don't think Martin King deserves a day. It seems to bother people that I think is a disgrace that Abraham Lincoln has to have his day taken away so that we can give it to Martin King. It seems to bother people. Well, we have it bothers it. people that I feel that way. What are we? Some kind of fascist country where we all have to march in lockstep? Heaven forbid! All right, Bob. Uh, we have President's Day, uh, which I felt uh, some way. But anyway, uh, we have a... A day observed for Columbus, right? No, it's not Columbus Day. Uh, it is uh, a day which commemorates the discovery of America. It's really a day to commemorate the discovery of America. Well, if we... Uh, 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 but I don't know what not... we're... Hey, look, you, 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 look you, you like the fact that we have Martin King Day, right? You like it? Well... You like it? Well, what I... You like the fact we have Martin King Day? Well... Why, do, why can't you answer the question? Uh, yes. Because... Okay, then you keep liking it. On WABC, Alex. Hello. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Grant. A little while ago, I heard your... Uh, Don't, uh, back away from the phone a little bit, Alex, please. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, a little while ago... Yeah, I back, back away from the phone. You're too close, Alex. You sound like you're swallowing. How does it sound now? That's a little better. Yeah, okay. Uh, a little while ago, you held a discourse in which you expressed a rather very cynical regard for human nature. Probably I'll go along with that. I just wonder if uh, your darling, beloved Republicans, the perfect Republicans, are included in that, uh, that characterization. I'm talking about human nature. I'm not talking about Democrats. I'm not talking about Republicans. I'm not talking about conservatives. I'm not talking about liberals. I'm not talking about intelligent people like me or dumb people like you. I'm talking about human nature as, uh, as a whole. I see. Including yourself, of course. No, be, no, I don't include well, you know, my, no, I don't, I don't, I don't include myself because I'm not a hypocrite. I see. Because I don't come on the air and pretend like butter wouldn't melt in my mouth. I see. Well, mm -hmm. uh, the fact of the matter is that some of the idols that you so adore and regard. With... I don't have idols, pal. How about Reagan? I don't have how about idols. Ronald Reagan. 
Well, I like Ronald Reagan. I wouldn't. Uh, I don't have idols. Yeah, I voted for him when uh, when I lived in California in 1966, and he ran against Pat Brown and beat Pat Brown by a million votes. I voted for him. Then I voted for him. Then I voted for him twice in 1980. Get a load of this. I was registered in New York, and I was registered in New Jersey, and I was so determined to to beat Jimmy Carter that I voted in New York, and then I voted in New Jersey. <laughs> How does that grab you, you jerk? <laughs> Get off my phone. How ridiculous. Joyce, you're on WABC. Hello. Hi. I just wanted to comment on Martin Luther King Day. A friend of mine... I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't bring the jerk up. Other people bring him up. I tell the truth how I feel, and that's all people want to talk okay, about. wait a minute. Get lost. Yeah. I'm a baby boomer, and I uh, like to just give you my input about uh, the savings. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I, I, I try to save, and I find it very difficult to save when these rats keep raising taxes and everything going up, Bob. Yep. My salary doesn't keep up with the 25, uh, 33% jump when they, they uh, raised the George Washington Bridge from $3 to $4. Dollars. I know. I know. It just eats you away. By the way, you're calling from New Jersey. I take it you live in New Jersey? No, nah, I live in New York. I'm under the, the devil in New York. Well, listen, I tell you, there was a time when a person was much better off being in New Jersey, but thanks to Flim Flam Florio, that's changed. Your influence counts. Use it. It's 7 o'clock. From ABC News, I'm...